Alright, this is Eagle Tutorial 2 Voltage Divider Part 3. And we're going to add the remaining parts to complete the voltage divider PCB. So, in the last tutorial, we had a resistor and we manipulated it by using the move, copy, rotate, and delete commands and/or buttons. And uh, what was left over from that tutorial is two resistors, and these two resistors we'll be using for the voltage divider. But now we want to add the rest of the parts, so go ahead and click your add part button or type in the add command and we need a voltage source so search for VCC spark funds got voltage source go ahead and select that just place it in there hit escape and now we need a ground search for GND Select Spark Funds Ground. Something I didn't mention in the last tutorial was that you can rotate a part before you place it. So by by clicking the right mouse button, or if you're a left-handed person, you're opposite. So by clicking the right mouse button, I'm rotating the ground part. Hit escape. Next we want to add a 3-pin Molex connector. So search for M03. This part will not be in the SparkFun library. It's going to be in a library called ConAmpQuick. Go ahead and say OK. Place that in your editor. Um, if you're wondering why <coughs> why we're using a 3-pin Molex connector well one for obviously voltage source and one for ground and the second one is for our output from when the voltage get divi gets divided and you'll see that later on when we wire it up <laughs> lastly we want to add four standoffs so go to your search bar and type stand Oops. SparkFun's got a regular standoff, so go ahead and select that. And just add four of these up here at the top. Standoffs normally go around the outside of your PCB, but if your PCB is fairly large, you'll want to put some in the middle as well. And these are holes which screws um, fasten your PCB to standoffs, and that's what keeps your board off of whatever device you're making. Um, so those are the parts that we wanted to add and lastly I just wanted to note that you can zoom in and out by using your mouse scroll wheel and you can pan through your schematic by holding the mouse wheel down and just dragging your schematic around. And those are um, two useful ways of navigating through your schematic. And that's all the parts that we need. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.